throughout the last five years I've been cubing, I've collected a bunch of puzzles, where last year I had about more than 50 puzzles, but this year, since a lot of cubes have been released, especially by Moyu, I decided I wanted to go over my collection once again. Let's get started. Okay, so here we have the Moyu Worm V9. It's still definitely my main cube, although I've been switching between the Super Waylong and this cube. It works pretty well. I actually demagloved it. I actually swapped out the magnets for the springs. I am definitely getting spring noise issues right now, but I can obviously fix it with some lube with the core. I kind of do want to clean it out a bit and reset it up again, even though I already did that like a few months ago, but I definitely do want to get rid of the spring noise that I actually have with it, which is actually probably one of the benefits of having magnets live on a cube but with springs it definitely works a lot better now we have the yj mgc square one i legitimately don't practice square one for some reason i know how to solve it but i'm pretty slow at it i definitely do need to learn a lot of the algorithms that are there for square one here is the standard r v5 when i got this as a free gift for the 100 dollars cart on the cubicle for my 150 dollars cubicle unboxing i actually didn't realize like how good the standard version of the r stream v5 is and it's honestly really really good for it and it kind of makes it feel like the balker one does absolutely nothing but i mean it kind of does it makes it a little bit more stable but i can perform just fine on this cube like pretty much the same on this between the balker r stream v5 so it kind of just shows that at this point at least with the r stream v5 not the super way long. Just Moyu has definitely nailed the fundamentals of actually making a good cube. This is the Chi M Pro. And it was pretty good, but I think now after using a bunch of different cubes it kind of feels like it's way way too fast but i think a little bit of compound 10 can actually make it more controllable like i mean the corner cutting is pretty good and like i've actually gotten like really good times on it it's kind of difficult for me to do it right now because of how fast it is so i think some compound 10 can actually slow it down a little bit and then I'm maybe also clean on the outside here we have the chi ms pyraminx which is kind of my main pyraminx because this is the only good one i have i added extra magnets to the tips but I don't think that did much because I still feel like it's way too easy for me to turn the tips on this cube. I have it set way too loose right now where at the last competition that had Pyraminx it legitimately just popped. Here we have the Volk M. I bought it when I was in Las Vegas last year. I think I set it up with some Mystic and DNM for whatever reason, and it's honestly pretty good. Here we have the Diantanian that I was probably gonna use to do blindfolded if I actually learned how to do blindfolded. I still really like how quiet and soft the cube feels. Kind of reminds me of the Gan X. Now we have the Super RS3M. This is the ball core one, and this is actually the one with the gold ball core. I actually felt like the ball core did absolutely nothing on this because when I was using it, I don't feel like the ball core is taking over. While on the Tornado V3, at least my flagship one, it actually did feel like the, the magnetic core was actually doing something. This was the cube that I used to make that mosaic that I used for prom. But Next, we have the YJ MGC Evo V2. I think I just felt like this cube was way too fast and every other YJ cube, like their big cubes, like the 4x4, 5x5, 6x6, I haven't tried the 5x5, but it was one of the best big cubes before Moyu came out with the Aoshi WRM and the Aofu, I'm pretty sure. During Sol's, I just felt like the magnets were a little bit too weak. The magnet adjustment is like way too complicated. I think maybe a little bit of compound 10 will actually fix it. Next, we have the Diane Guhong Pro M. And it's probably like one of Dyan's best releases this year. I remember the, the Tang in V3 being not really that great this year. After setting it up a little bit, it feels a lot better. There is still a little bit of lube that is like seeping out a little bit from this, but I think as long as I just keep breaking it in for a little bit, it will actually be a lot better. So here we have the YS3M. I actually put a Cubit logo on it. I actually instantly made it when I originally got it. Honestly, it's still pretty good and I still kind of really like it. It's just, I think it got a little bit faster now, but I remember when I got my Worm V9, instantly made this just feel really slow. But now after switching between all three of them, it definitely feels really good again. This is the Maylong 5x5. I haven't really solved 5x5 that much at all. You can definitely still see the tape residue from when I made that primitive mosaic for the prom video. Here we've got an access cube that my friend gave me last Christmas. 
I literally only solved it once and I haven't solved it since. The next cube I have is the Chi MP and I've actually been wanting to get a Tornado V2 for a while now and I think they discontinued it but I remember seeing the last batch of Tornado V2s go on sale a few months ago and I really wanted to get one but now they're discontinued so this is the closest thing I can get to a Tornado V2. Here is the Super Waylong. For the price of this cube, it's just mid. It's a really good cube, like the performance is really great and it brought back adjust the magnets to the corners but because there's not really that much new from it i feel like it's just mid the next cube i have here is the concave 3x3 it's the yj jinjiao concave 3x3 and i actually magnetized it because i actually felt like the performance on it was really good and the color scheme was actually aesthetically pleasing but the more i actually did solves on it i think i kind of way underestimated the amount of times i actually mistake different colors on the color scheme because let's do a check board pattern on this if I look at it, the colors don't really contrast that much. And sometimes whenever I do F2L especially, I can mistake these two for basically the same color. I think the red and orange contrast pretty well, but the blue and green are not really contrasting colors. Because of that, it just makes it a little bit more difficult to solve. Here is the Tornado V3 Pioneer Edition. And after setting it up properly, I actually kind of like it a lot more. I feel like I actually start getting my normal times on it. I do still get a little bit of catches on it, but it actually works pretty well now. Next cube is the Chi M Pro Ball Core UV Coated Edition. It's actually probably one of the cheapest ball core UV coated cubes that is out there right now. However, the ball core doesn't actually feel like it's doing anything. Next, we have the YJ MGC 4x4, and it's definitely my main 4x4 right now because I actually did get the YJ Geelong Mini 4x4, but it popped, and I don't know where all the pieces are, and I tried to reassemble it today, but <laughs> I didn't want to do it. Here's the GAN 356 I carry, and this is probably my first kind of okay, actually, good smart cube. It definitely is not on par with the GAN 12 UI, just doesn't have a gyroscope or a chargeable battery, but... I think the good thing about this cube is it does last a long time when you're not using it a lot. Here we have an RS3M 2020, just a normal RS3M 2020. I was actually gonna try to do something with it when I originally bought it. Although I did notice the magnet strength was a little bit more stronger than the our student 2021 that i have for some reason and i think i also set it up pretty fast and honestly i kind of just still really like the feel of this cube here we have the worm 2021 that actually got signed by max park here's my ball core r3 v5 although it doesn't seem like the ball core does much i think it actually does align if i just turn a little bit slowly i feel like it deforms a lot it just doesn't feel like it does as much as it would on the worm v9 or super way long but i'm honestly glad this doesn't actually have edge repelling magnets but because of how weak the magnet strengths are i kind of don't really like it as much as the worm v9 but also pretty good for one hand next we have the gan mirror m i bought this because I wanted to compete in mirror blocks at one competition. It's one of the best mirror blocks. It's magnetic, one like most other mirror blocks are not. And it turns pretty well. Like the corner cutting is insane on this. Like, <sighs> look at it. Definitely not here, but if I do here, it can literally corner cut that. Here we have, I think what I assume to be a Mefferts gear ball. There is a Mefferts logo, but I don't know if it's a knockoff or if it's the real one, but I think it's definitely, it might actually be the real one. Next up, we have the Moyu RS Cube Maglev. I literally don't practice cube anymore for some reason. Like, I think the only other competition that I had that had cube was several months ago, and I haven't practiced cube since for some reason. Here we have the Yushin Little Magic M. I actually replaced the internals, with, at least the centers, with the ones from the stickered one that I had that is like non-magnetized for some reason now and it turns pretty good but the center caps fall off a lot i tried to glue them once but then they just fell off okay here we have the gan 330 and honestly it's a pretty good cube despite it being really small it performs really well here we have a yj mgc 2x2 i actually have an mgc elite but i honestly don't know if i lost it at my competition or if it's somewhere in my room here i have one of two rubik's brand 2x2s I think this is the one one of my friends gave me too. The other one I actually got for my birthday for some reason, but yeah. And next we have a Rubik's brand super floppy cube. It actually turns quite well. Not really the best turning one of these, but it's honestly pretty good. Kind of pretty fun to solve and it's kind of one of the things I just solve whenever I don't want to actually solve three by three. The next cube we have here is the Tiger two by two. And there's actually a bunch of dust on this cube because I haven't used it in a while but it turns pretty well. 
and it's the Yushin tiger. I definitely do want to get some of the other Yushin animals. Okay, I legitimately don't know if I'm going to be able to fit this in frame. We have the Hishu 18 centimeter 3 by 3 I don't think this is going to actually be focusing. I kind of don't want to do some turns on it because I feel like it's kind of way too big to do it. Plus, I'm actually literally holding up my tripod right now. But I think it's kind of a good collector's item to have. I kind of want to get the 30 centimeter one eventually or even the... A 34.8 centimeter one that Dianxiang made because yeah this one I can't I don't I kind of don't really want to do turns on it because the pieces on it are uneven it catches a lot so I feel like if I do it, a whole solve on it it's gonna catch a lot and it's gonna be really difficult to solve here we have the Qi 2x2x3 I haven't used this in quite a long time but it's literally a really good speed cube it's actually kind of slow right now but it's literally like a, you made like a cuboid into a speed cube like it's really really good it's kind of slow right now but but I remember putting a lot of weight five in this when I originally got it several years ago. Yeah, it's pretty good. Here is the Rubik's Connected Cube. It's honestly a, a pretty good smart cube and the app is kind of a little bit better, but I don't really like the stickers on it. I kind of wish it was stickerless rather than having stickers because the stickers on it are actually starting to peel off the more I use it, so I don't really use it that much anymore because of that, but it still turns pretty well. Next, we have the Maylong. I kind of like how it actually has a pretty soft feel, but the center caps fall a lot, so it's not really usable for me. Next, we have this Twist Skew, and actually, I legitimately don't know how to turn it. The next key we have here is the MF3RS, and this is actually not my original one. But my original one, I actually broke one of the corner pieces on it, and I turned it into an edges only 3x3 before completely unstickering it and then putting it into a box, which I don't think I have anymore. So I ended up getting rid of that, but I bought another one. I think it was already discontinued by that time, but I honestly wanted another one to have like one of my original speed cubes in my collection. I thought it was gonna feel a little bit more different than my original one, but I think it feels pretty much the same. Okay, yeah, it's honestly pretty good and definitely not on par with today's cubes, but yeah. Next, we have the Tornado V3. This is my flagship one, and this is the original one. It actually still turns pretty well. Next, we have the GAN 356X, and the more I started to break it in, it actually started to get a lot faster. Next, we have the Worm 2021 with the broken corner piece. The same corner piece I actually used to fix my other Worm 2021. The next cube we have here is the Dianxiang Blade Cube. I didn't know the name of this cube for the longest time until after watching one of JR Keeper's videos. Here we have one of the newer Rubik's Brand 3x3s. This is the one of the three that I actually bought from Target. It actually turns pretty well. I think all it needs is magnets, but loosening it up made it a lot more unstable and it doesn't really corner cut that much. Yeah, I just made it explode. <laughs> okay, the next cube we have here is the Rubik's Apprentice Cube. It's literally just one of the, the newer Rubik's 2x2s, but it's basically the sandwich cube version of it. I know there's like some extra stickers that come with it, but I never bothered to actually put it on the cube, so pretty easy to solve. Like if I just do that, it's literally solved. Next here is the Rubik's Speed Cube. This is actually the newer one, the one that has magnets. It turns pretty well. Yeah, corner cutting is also pretty okay and the magnet strength is not that strong some people might like it some people don't but it's at least one of rubik's better speed cubes than what they have been releasing a lot before it next we have the lego cube it's actually called the building blocks cube it actually has a pretty okay mechanism and it actually turns quite fast but the corner cutting on it isn't really that great plus you have all this like lego pieces that kind of hurt your hands after using it for a while. I kind of wish they kind of made it out of a smaller 3x3 and just made it a lot closer so you can actually bandage it like how Z3 Cubing made his own Lego cube before. So there's that. Now we have a non-magnetic Maylong. Still turns pretty fine, but the magnetic one is definitely better. Next cube we have is the MF3 RS2 and this is actually the one where I actually swapped out the, the centers for the MF3 or S centers. And then I think it was because I actually tried to make a Siamese cube out of it. So there is a bunch of super glue on some of the pieces, but yeah, it's kind of okay. But if you magnetize it, it was like one of the best 
cubes. Like, people were literally using this over, like, other cubes like the Valk or something like that. The next cube I have here is the Moyu Ars 3M 2021. And that's honestly pretty slow. I think I tried to set it up like the Yo Cube at some point, but I think I put a lot of weight 5 in it, and it's way too slow right now. Next, we have the Moyu uh, Meilong Mirror Blocks. That's kind of a good mirror blocks. Like, it actually turns pretty fast. There's no magnets, though. I don't think it corner cuts as well as the, the Gan one, but it's still pretty good. Here we have the Yushin Little Magic that I actually swapped out the center pieces for. This is the Yushin Little Magic M because I wanted to try to magnetize my Gan Air. Now, three-fourths of the magnets are gone to where it feels like this cube doesn't even have magnets at all. Also, initially, the magnets were also pretty weak. Okay, here we have the Rubik's brand Speed 3x3. This was actually literally the one that was um, made before the collaboration with Gan. It's really, really loud. Can actually corner cut, but can't do 45 degrees. And there's like barely any reverse corner cutting on this cube, but it's not that great at all. The next cube I have here is the Dianxing Pyraminx, or at least I think it's a Dianxing Pyraminx. It's really bad. It has ball bearings. It's also pretty loud too, but I actually got this I'm at my trip to the Philippines and it's kind of my only pyramids I had at this time because I had another one before that that was also ball bearing pyramids, but I kind of broke it. Next here we have the Moyu RS3M. Yeah, the RS3M and not the RS3M 2020. This is the cube that they released way before the RS3M 2020, or I think a year before the RS3M 2020. And I actually really liked this cube when I got it and I could corner cut it pretty well and I actually felt like the magnet strength was perfect for me when the RS3M 2020 actually got the spring compression system of the GTS 3 that literally changed everything and that actually made the RS3M 2020 itself become like really popular. Next we have the Ivy Cube. It's honestly a pretty easy solve once you like figure it out a little bit. It's not too hard to learn. It's easy to solve. Pretty good. Okay next is the Tingin V3. I think this was literally one of the first cubes I actually unboxed this year and I honestly thought I was gonna really like it a lot but then I think just the performance on it was not that great. The speed was kind of okay. The corner cutting, kind of okay. Yeah, it wasn't really the best release. And Dian definitely changed it a lot with the Kuhong Pro. Definitely simplified a lot of things and it was definitely a lot better. So the next thing I have here are three different Rubik's brands. These are pretty much the exact same cube. I'm pretty sure this one is the original Rubik's brand that I have. It's kind of really dirty right now. And this one is the one that I had that was actually given to me by my cousin. And then this one I actually bought new. I actually ended up loosening it a lot to make it a lot faster. This one, I actually tried to do that a little bit. It's still pretty slow. But this one, I sanded down a lot of the pieces to try to make it a bit better. Now it's pretty slow. I remember putting WD-40 in this cube to actually try to make it a bit faster. Faster, but yeah, it didn't really do that much to make it a lot better. The next cube that I have here is the YJ Yeet Ball and I have two of them for some reason. I bought two of them because I wanted to use one of them for like, a skit, but I ended up never actually making it because I just realized the idea was, was not gonna work. I haven't used them in a while, but these are just spherical ivy cubes. So these solve the same as that other ivy cube that I have over there. Next cube I have is the Rubik's two by two again. This is the one I actually got on my birthday um, last year. Next cube I have here is the cube style Penrose cube. It turns pretty well. Solving it is actually kind of confusing using there's a bunch of identical pieces on this cube so it actually makes it a little bit more difficult but once you get used to it it's pretty much pretty easy so these are the two five below cubes that these were originally fused but because i needed some extra three by threes to use for the prom mosaic i actually decided to unfuse them next cube we have here is the rubik speed cube this is actually the one in collaboration with gan and it's honestly pretty good kind of a pretty good speed cube it's kind of like the gan air i kind of wish it was magnetic though but it's still pretty stable so like you it doesn't really need the magnets that much next we have the rubik's phantom and actually you can definitely do see the colors right now but it should reveal the colors but you can definitely still see them so it doesn't really make that much of a difference right now it's a cool concept but it only works like half of the year because if it's too hot you'd actually have to put it in the refrigerator but if it's too cold like you can't really heat up that much. The next cube I have here is a Chi Fisher cube. I think I remember how to solve it, but I haven't solved it in like quite a while. I think the last time I solved it was like a year ago when I did the do I still know how to solve these puzzles video. It's honestly pretty good. Like it turns pretty much like a speed cube. I think I just have it really tight right now, so it can't really corner it that much. Next cube we have here is the Tetra Minx. So it's basically just the Pyraminx with no tips. It doesn't turn that good. I think this is a pretty old one and some of the pieces 
pieces have broken off. I can put them back on to the texture minks, but it looks like some of the pieces have popped off for some reason. Next cube I have here is the Rubik's 2x2. This is the Rubik's 2.0 one. It turns pretty fast, but it has absolutely no corner cutting. And now we have the Landland 3x3x2. Honestly, a pretty good cube. I'm pretty sure this is the exact same cube that JR Cuber was using with the 3x3x2 tutorial. I think I remember learning from that tutorial on how to actually solve this, and it turns really, really well. It has absolutely no corner cutting, but I'm pretty sure this doesn't have springs in it. I'm pretty sure most modern ones like the chi or the left one one or whatever it's called actually does have like springs or whatever and is a little bit more speed capable than this pretty fun puzzle the next one i have here is the moyu outlong v2 i don't know why i bought this i think i remember seeing one of jrkb's video on the 63 by 3 and i decided to buy an outlong v2 uh, uh, for some reason turns pretty well i actually tried to put magnets inside this for some reason but because of how small the magnets that i put in here are or just because i inserted it wrong it doesn't do anything at all it just feels like exactly how it was when I got it. The last cube I have here is this random YJ 5x5. It's not magnetic. Yeah, it doesn't turn that well. And it also has this pink instead of the red for some reason. I kind of wish it had the normal color scheme, but yeah. This was also one of the cubes I got in the Philippines as well. I think I was also trying to figure out how to solve 5x5 at that time. I think I knew how to do it, but I got one random parody and then didn't know how to do it. So now I actually moved all of the 3x3s from the shelf over here to the chair. I think what I'm going to do now is actually put all of these cubes into the super flip pattern. I think I, I kind of want to like change it up a bit because I think last time I did checkboard and then I just kept it all solved. Let's do it. You call me last night, drunk again. Trying to get me back with no offense. Told you many times, but I don't want to. Looks like I got all of them to be in the super flip pattern and I think now it's time to put them all back on the shelf. So I think I'm gonna do the ones that are gonna go on this shelf first and then the ones that go on that shelf after. So yeah, honestly, I'm actually kind of surprised how much my cube collection actually grew throughout this year, especially. And I'm kind of happy that I actually decided to just put all of my cubes that I could do the super flip on into the super flip pattern because I think it was going to be really interesting because last time I obviously did the checkerboard pattern. So overall, this year was pretty good in terms of cubing. Like I actually got to go to competitions and actually broke so many PRs this year. So I'm kind of happy about that. So with that, here's to next year.